Hi, I'm Michael Bennett, and before I continue with my story, please like and subscribe to hear how I dealt with one of the most devastating family betrayals anyone could imagine. I'm a 32-year-old software engineer living in Boston, and what I'm about to share still keeps me up at night sometimes. You're working too hard, Michael. You should come visit more often, Mom said during our weekly Sunday dinner, her hands trembling slightly as she tried to hold her fork. The arthritis was getting worse, I could tell. I'm here every week, Mom. Unlike some people who live here and barely spend time with you, I replied, glancing at Robert's empty chair. Your brother's just going through a rough patch. You know how hard it's been since your father passed? The mention of Dad made my chest tighten. Five years had passed since the heart attack took him, but it felt like yesterday. That's when everything started changing, especially Robert. Where is he tonight, anyway? Oh, he said something about a business meeting, a new venture, another one? Mom, that's what he said about the food truck disaster last month, and the crypto investment before that. Mrs. Bennett, I saw him at the casino again yesterday. Lisa, our next-door neighbor, called over the fence while watering her plants the next morning. I hate to be a busybody, but I'm worried. I appreciate you keeping an eye on things, Lisa, really. Later that week, my girlfriend Rachel stopped by to check on Mom's arthritis. As a nurse, she noticed things I might miss. Michael, can we talk? Rachel pulled me aside, her face serious. Your mom's prescription bottle is almost full. She should have used more by now, given her dosage. Maybe she's feeling better? Her hands are worse than last month. Something's not adding up. Just then, Robert stormed in, reeking of cigarettes and cheap beer. Family meeting, huh? Discussing me behind my back? Where have you been? Mom was waiting for you at dinner Sunday. I'm trying to secure our future here, big brother. Not all of us can play with computers all day and make six figures. At least I have a job. How much did you lose this time? That's none of your business. It is when you're living off Mom's pension. Boys, please, Mom interrupted, her voice shaking. Robert, honey, maybe you could look for a regular job just until your business plans. Oh, so you're taking his side now? After everything I've done for you? I'm the one who lives here. I'm the one who takes care of you. Rachel squeezed my hand, a silent warning to stay calm. But watching Mom flinch at Robert's tone made my blood boil. He'd changed so much since Dad died, from my goofy little brother to this angry, manipulative stranger. I think it's time we had a serious discussion about Mom's care, I said firmly. You lost that right when you moved to your fancy Boston apartment, Robert sneered. Some of us actually stuck around. I looked at Mom, saw the pain in her eyes, not just physical, but emotional. Something was very wrong here, and I was going to figure out what. The scream I heard when I opened the front door that Tuesday afternoon still haunts me. I decided to surprise Mom with lunch, but instead found her crumpled on the kitchen floor. Mom, what happened? Where are your meds? I... I can't find them. Robert said he'd pick up my prescription, but... You mean you haven't had any medication for how long? Three, maybe four days? Robert said the pharmacy was out. I helped her to the couch when Lisa burst through the door. I heard screaming. Sarah, are you okay? Did you know about this? I demanded. Michael, there's something you need to know. I overheard Robert yesterday. He was pressuring your mother about the house deed. What do you mean? He wants me to sign over the property, Mom admitted, tears streaming down her face. Says it's to protect my assets. But when I hesitated, the pain medication just disappeared. I called Rachel immediately. Within an hour, she'd accessed the pharmacy records through her hospital connections. Michael, the prescriptions were filled on schedule. Someone picked them up every time. Just then, a loud argument erupted outside. Through the window, I saw Robert backing away from a menacing-looking man in a leather jacket. You've got two days, Bennett. Two days to get me my fifty grand or things get ugly. James, I can explain. I don't want explanations. I want my money. After they left, I made a decision. Mom, I'm installing some cameras, just to be safe. He's my son, Michael, and I'm your son, too. Something's very wrong here. The cameras revealed more than I was prepared for. Late at night, Robert rummaging through Mom's purse. 
pocketing her pension checks, screaming at her when she asked about her medication. Look at these bank statements, Rachel said, pointing at the withdrawals. 5000 last week, 8000 before that. I was too scared to tell you. Mom finally broke down one evening. He said if I didn't sign over the house, he'd stop taking care of me completely. Said you were too busy with your own life to help. Has he threatened you before? He said, he said he'd put me in a home, a bad one, where no one would visit me. Why didn't you call me? He takes my phone sometimes. Says I don't need to bother you. Says you don't really care. Mrs. Bennett, Lisa interrupted, entering through the back door. I recorded something you need to hear. The audio was clear. Robert arguing with someone about selling the house as soon as the deed was transferred, planning to force Mom into a state facility. That's it, I said, my hands shaking with rage. This ends now. Please, Mom, grab my arm. Don't hurt him. He's still my son. No, Mom. He stopped being my brother the moment he decided to torture you for money. But don't worry. I won't hurt him. I'm going to destroy him. Miss Chen, I need your help to protect my mother, I said, sliding the evidence folder across the desk to the elder law attorney. Her eyes widened as she reviewed the surveillance photos. This level of elder abuse, it's not just unethical, it's criminal. Back home, my hidden cameras caught Robert in a new low. He was going through Mom's jewelry box, stuffing her precious heirlooms into his pockets. That necklace was Grandma's, I whispered to Rachel as we watched the footage. Mom was saving it for my future wife. Michael, there's more, Rachel's voice was tense. I found something at work. Someone's been writing prescriptions under Dr. Thompson's name. They're forged. A loud crash from outside interrupted us. James, the gambling thug, had Robert pinned against his car. Where's my money, you piece of garbage? I told you, I'll have it next week. Fifty grand doesn't appear out of nowhere. The house deal is almost done. Once Mom signs, I'd heard enough. That night, I made an anonymous call to James. Bennett's planning to skip town Thursday taking a bus to Chicago. The next morning, Lisa rushed over with her phone. I recorded him last night. You need to hear this. The video showed Robert screaming at mom, waving papers in her face. Sign these or your precious medication disappears for good. Mom was sobbing on the recording. Please, Robbie, your father would be so ashamed. Dad's dead, and you will be too if you don't sign. Rachel examined the property transfer documents. Michael, look at these signatures. They don't match your mom's handwriting. That evening, mom finally told me everything. It started small, she whispered, hands trembling. First, he needed money for rent, then for gambling debts. When I said no, things started disappearing. My phone, my jewelry, my medicine. Why didn't you tell me sooner? He said he'd tell everyone I had dementia that he'd get power of attorney, that I'd never see you again. Has he hit you? No, but sometimes when he's angry, he gets so close, screaming in my face. I thought he might. Lisa brought us tea, her face grim. I should have called the police months ago. I just... He's your son, Sarah. Not anymore, Mom's voice was suddenly firm. I've been trying to protect him, Michael. Trying to save my little boy, but he's gone. That person living here, that's not my Robbie anymore. Rachel squeezed my hand as Mom continued. He forged checks, stole my cards. When I confronted him, he just laughed, said no one would believe me, said you wouldn't care. I have everything documented, I assured her. The abuse, the theft, the forged prescriptions. But Mom, I need you to be strong now. Are you ready to end this? Mom wiped her tears, straightening her shoulders. Yes, do whatever you have to do. Just get him out of my house. Don't worry, I said, pulling out my phone. I've got a plan that will make sure Robert never hurts anyone again. It all came crashing down on a rainy Thursday morning. I watched from my car as James and two burly guys cornered Robert in the driveway. Going somewhere, Bennett. Chicago's nice this time of year. How did you... I mean, I don't know what you're talking about. Funny, because your bus ticket says different. Before Robert could respond, police cruisers swarmed the driveway, lights flashing. Robert Bennett, you're under arrest for prescription fraud and elder abuse. This is ridiculous. Mom, tell them. 
Tell them I was taking care of you. But mom just watched from the window, Rachel's arm around her shoulders as they led him away. Got an interesting call, Detective Morris told me later. Guy named Steve Roberts' old college roommate. Says Robert ran investment scams back in college. Seems he never stopped. The IRS jumped in next. Turns out those business ventures were elaborate fraud schemes. The evidence kept piling up. Seven counts of elder abuse, medication theft, fraud, forgery, the prosecutor read out in court. Mr. Bennett, you're looking at significant prison time. Mom moved in with Rachel and me during the trial. Watching her recover, both physically and emotionally, was like seeing her come back to life. I met someone at therapy today, she told me over dinner. Another woman whose son stole her savings. We're thinking of starting a support group. That's wonderful, Mom. You know what she told me? Our children broke our hearts, but they can't break our spirit. Five years passed. Robert got eight years for everything combined. Rachel and I got married in our backyard, Mom beaming in the front row. I have something for you, she said at the reception, holding out a familiar box. Inside was Grandma's necklace. The police recovered it from a pawn shop. I want Rachel to have it. Mom's support group grew. Silver strength, she called it. Watching her help other elderly abuse survivors heal, it made all the pain worth it. She bought a small house just ten minutes from us. Every Sunday, we still have family dinner, the right way, filled with love and laughter instead of fear and manipulation. Yesterday, Robert got released. He tried calling Mom. I've changed, he claimed. Done a lot of thinking. Can we talk? No, she said firmly. You're not welcome in my life anymore. I have a real family now, one that doesn't hurt me. But I'm your son. You lost that right when you chose cruelty over love. Goodbye, Robert. She hung up and turned to me. Are we still on for game night? You bet. Rachel's making your favorite lasagna. Later, at her support group meeting, Mom stood proud before two dozen survivors. Our worth isn't measured by how much we forgive, she told them. Sometimes the strongest thing we can do is walk away. I lost a son, yes, but I gained something more valuable. My dignity, my safety, and my power. Watching her speak, strong and confident, I realized something profound. Sometimes family isn't who you're born to. It's who you choose to become. Mom chose to become a survivor, a leader, a warrior. And me? I chose to become the son she deserved. Thanks for watching how justice caught up with my brother Robert. What would you do if you discovered a family member was abusing your parent? Would you take immediate legal action or try to handle it privately first? I chose to gather evidence before confronting Robert. But sometimes I wonder if I waited too long while mom suffered. What's the right balance between protecting family reputation and stopping abuse? Share your thoughts in the comments. If you want more real stories about standing up to toxic family members and choosing peace over toxic loyalty, hit that subscribe button and turn on notifications. Let's build a community that supports survivors and holds abusers accountable, no matter who they are. Remember, blood doesn't always mean family, and sometimes walking away is the strongest thing you can do.